Oh my gosh, the cat hair is real from this cat. You should, he'd be shedding. Hit the like button if you want to see a cat cam. I'm thinking we're going to have to make that happen. And this got me thinking about one of our most controversial times on the mic where we covered some news, Russ. It happened years ago, 2020, in fact. We need to talk about Marvel Previews 95. If we're going to talk about things that people may view as, quote, crazy, potentially, we got to take it back to a comic book analysis that really caused a stir in the community and riled up a lot of feelings in the community. Oh, they absolutely were. I mean, when we were on the... so Break it down, Sensei. Edge of Spider-Verse had come out, and people were just trying to get as many appearances of Miles Morales as possible. And really, people were looking for the ultimate Fallout 4, to looking for the 1 in 25 variant. And again, as they start digging, you try to find what's the real, actual, true first of the shout-out Topher. We ended up finding out that in Marvel Previews number 95, there was the cover with Miles Morales, and it actually predated his ultimate Fallout 4 appearance. So when Tom and I went to the mic and started talking about a CDC 9.8 that sold for $2,000. There was a massive uproar. There were some people that were number one upset about the fact that we were even focusing on this. How could you say that this is a book that anyone would care about? And then you had the other side of the collectors who were like, dude, don't tell anyone about that. That's my secret. We saw both that's, sides of it. That's my honeypot, right? There were people who were like, dude, I've been picking those up super cheap because no one knew what they were. But the fact that there were so few 9.8s on the census, we didn't really know what way it was going to go until Tom actually got the buyer of this book on the mic. And what did he say? Well, it was it was such a, a loud uproar. I was, it was like one of the first times I was seeing like my name brought up in Facebook forms and people kind of complaining because it was like <laughs> as if, as it was as if it was my book that sold right. and I talked about it on the mic to sell it which is not at, it's not at all what happened not what we do yeah no actually on the contrary that was being like kind of brought up that maybe I I helped the sale because I was hyping the book or something so I thought oh it's so absurd yeah but let's see if we can find the buyer and the buyer reached out Buyer reached out. We kind of like threw it out there. Like we'd like to talk to the buyer. Buyer reached out and I had him on the mic. And we talked about this very subject, trying to explain the investment on something that possibly the majority of people in our community would go, that just seems absurd. There's no way. Yeah. And I think the quote was, I saw, well, you know what he said? He said, it's miles. Right. That's really all he had to say. He said, totally. he looked at the census count. I think at the time it was under eight of them that were graded a 9.8 on the census. And he spent like a little over 2000 Actually, GPA says it was $2,100. May 2020. Wow. So this dates it a little bit here. And he came on the show. And a lot of the reason why he came on the show is because he saw how much negativity was was kind of like that purchase. Like it, it definitely bothered people. And he, he wanted to explain himself. And he explained himself quite well. He thought it was a good investment. It's miles. And fast forward, August 2021, the start and like kind of in the heart of the comic boom last year. A 9.8, which by the way, we're going to talk about the census count because it has increased, but not by much. Sold for $11,600. Sounds like a good investment to me. Oh, absolutely. Right? Yeah. So it was under 10 at the time of coverage. And some of the things people were saying were, oh, this is so terrible. There's going to be people who are going to break out boxes of this. They're going to find this in these in warehouses. There's going to be just countless of them graded. Mm -hmm. So the rise of this book, because it was rising as Ultimate Fallout 4 and the Dejevic variant rose up, well, people were looking at this going, well, it's just going to tank because there's going to be so many that hit the census. Comic fam, I'm reporting today on the CGC census of a 9.8. There are more of them. There's a total of 13. Now, doesn't sound like a lot because it isn't, especially when you look at Miles' first appearance. And Russ, what did we find? We found out that for Miles' first appearance, there were 3,269.8s of the Ultimate Fallout 4. That's right. And taking it one step further, of the Dejevic variant, last count as of uh, the filming of this, a total of 158 9.8s on the census. And we haven't even gotten to the issue prior, issue 94. 
Now, issue 94 is a little bit tougher pill to swallow for some people because in 95, it is absolutely Miles on the cover. It is the ultimate Spider-Man, the Miles Morales uh, volume. He is on the cover of it leaping at you. In 94, he actually shows up where they have the Dejevic connecting covers. So you see him in full Miles Morales on an interior page. There's like Captain America on the cover and whatnot. Really, really tough book to find. No one was looking for it. We found a recent sale of this book, a 9.4 for $280. Oh, dude, that's available right now. Oh, it's that a... It that wasn't what's sold. Yeah, that's available right now. Under 300 bucks for 9.4. People aren't even buying them. So that right there kind of shows that there is a point. Because this is this long enough now. Maybe in the early days we can say, oh, FOMO could be applied here. Low-key members don't know about this stuff. But no, this is on Key Collector We've been Comics. talking about this for a while, yeah. Well, didn't let, catch up. Yeah, let me chime in a little bit just to give a little perspective here because I remember when this happened. I wasn't part of the video, mm -hmm. but I watched the video and I saw the comment section. And it's interesting because it's it's the, the conversation of um, what is a comic, what isn't. It comes down to that really. Right. Like, oh, it's not really a comic. I need everybody else to think back. This isn't a brand new thing. Okay. If you go to your price guide, there is an entire section called promotional. True. All right. They've been doing promotional comic books, and this will tie in, too, to this Invisible comic. Same thing. All right. This is a preview. It's not really a comic, a part of the whole comics, you know, run. It's kind of a promotional, it's, or it is just a part of the comic I mean, thing. It's literally a catalog. called previews. It's a catalog comic. Right. These were free. But these still matter because there is a, a huge promotional book, Motion Pictures Weekly number... God, I forget what number it is, but it's the first appearance of Submariner before Marvel Comics 1. Mm -hmm. An extremely rare book, massively coveted, massively coveted. So it doesn't have to necessarily be a comic to have value or to count. The collectors are going to decide that, and that's what we're seeing here. It's falling into the people who should decide it. Not your opinion because you're not into it, or just because you want to take a hard stance that you can't ever change or view a different perspective, it's going into the collectors and the hobbyists to figure it out. And that's where it should matter most. Motion Picture Funnies Weekly issue number one um, was a pamphlet. Only nine copies are known to exist. Um, rumored that it was intended to be a giveaway in theaters, but the full run was never actually released. Mm -hmm. Then you have Marvel Comics issue number one, starting the, the Marvel name, but also introducing the Submariner in comics for the first time. And Human Torch, by the way. And Human Torch, but it technically gets the second appearance on, um, on Key Collector specifically because Motion Picture Funnies Weekly is a comic book-sized promotional item that exists, and it's, it's almost incalculable right now what that would go for because they're so rare. Right. So. Absolutely. I mean... <laughs> That I would have, I'd rather have that book over a Marvel Comics one oh for my. rarity. Whoa, okay, for hold rarity. Up, hold up, I'm Jack. not saying that it isn't I'm surprised a cooler to hear book, that, but for me, because that's what I'm saying, it, I don't collect just because it's like the most expensive book or the most important because of rarity plays a huge factor, mm -hmm. especially in the golden age. That's Are you surprised to hear that, Russ? I actually am because it's one of those things if you're like, oh, I really want a Marvel Comics number one as the pinnacle. And yeah, I know it's a promotional thing, but that's 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 crazy. I am more likely to you get know? a Marvel Comics one than I am a Mosher picture. Yes. Oh, yeah, to find so one, have it fall on your lap. Right. right. So if that opportunity <laughs> comes... Once you're, in a lifetime. Right. So you're almost... Multiple lifetimes. It's almost wiser for you to want to grab that side by side um, and even apples to apple, like price wise, I don't even know what that price would go for right now with the hype of Submariner. <laughs> I mean, I'd imagine it's less than Marvel Comics one, but I feel like I, I'd if I can get a Marvel Comics one now, then I might as well get a Motion Picture Weeklies and get that Marvel Comics again later. Comic fam, let me know in the comic comment. I keep saying comic section. Okay. Let me know in the comment section, the back issue section um, below, what you think about this conundrum. Marvel Comics 1 or Motion Picture Weekly week, Funny week, Funny so Weekly Weekly number 1 uh, Why can't we re Okay, I've we're going to literally never heard comic of this. This fam, is amazing. We are going to learn this oh, yeah. together. Yeah, it's crazy. Motion Picture Funny's Weekly number 1. We have to all memorize that, not just as a team, but as a group collectively comic fam.